Yep, it's recording now. Hi guys, Luke Jones here um, for another interview. I've, this afternoon I'm joined with a uh, three-time PDC World Championship participant, Diogo Patera. How are you, Diogo? How, how are you keeping in this uh, lockdown? Hi, Luke. Thank you very much for having me on. Um, yeah, I'm good, mate. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, uh, lockdown started different than I, I've been dealing now, to be honest. Um, I started to, like, I didn't practice too much darts. And I was just looking after my, um, my wife because she's pregnant. I was trying to uh, be around her because uh, we didn't really spend much time together. Uh, during the pregnancy and um, the lockdown came in like the the, um, the last two months so I tried to enjoy it but then I got called up for modus to play a few times and my game went like from that day like top to like completely rubbish and I didn't really like it so I decided to put more hours in and yeah, I'm starting to see some progress. So yeah, I'm 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 back to normal life really, as nothing had happened. Practicing, 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 and when I have time, I I spend time with my wife. Even though she come back to work as well, last couple of weeks, so it gave me extra time to practice. Yeah, um, you mentioned the modus like on the darts league there. Eh? Um, that must be. During all this, I must do your game, but no harm at all because it's match practice. Um, when you start back, then you, where others haven't been playing, you have, so it gives you that advantage, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Um, I, I'm really um, up for it. Every time they message if, asking me if I can play, uh, I will play. The only problem was with, with my confidence. I thought the small, the few times that I was doing practicing, it would keep at least my game uh, wouldn't wouldn't drop too much and it, it, it did drop and uh, I was shaking playing <laughs> like my first two or three games. I was shaking on my own house and I'm like that that doesn't make sense. It should be comfortable in my house, you know. It's my dart ball, it's my setup, yeah. I should be used to it. And um, I, I wasn't and I start playing bad and and I would start thinking about it and it, it was good because I managed to get the confidence back, confidence back. Yeah, I think in my last week I, I hit one of the highest average there, 105, 106 against Boris, um, 80% on doubles was very good. Even though I got uh, I need my new dart, so finally I received my new darts from Boo, so I was trying it. Uh, during modus all the time, I never used my old dart. So I, as soon as I got the dart, I started using it. So it was very good because I, I got used to my new darts, and I'm, I'm taking this time, the lockdown, to um, trying to get used to these new setup, the new darts, and everything. And it's been helping really. The, the modus, like the online games and online match practice, has been helping a lot. Yeah, that's good to hear. So I expect it to be smashing in the 10 av- plus averages when we come back then. I, I hope so, yes. I, uh, I've, I've been getting better, like more consistent, hitting more triples and doubles. So uh, it's still not the same level it was just before the like, lockdown, to be honest. But we still have a few more weeks. So uh, I, I hope yeah. that this time will be enough to, to come back to the, the, uh, the level I was. Yeah. Um, so I want to take you back to the beginning, really. Uh, we first saw you on our TV screens on the Sky One Game Show 180. Um, you partnered James Wade. You obviously won it. What was it like at that time, before your career had started, to be partnering someone like James Wade, one of the great three? Um, if I tell you, you, you think I, I, I'm lying, but... Um, in Brazil, we don't have too much information about that. Well, we didn't have it. Now it's a lot easier because I'm here. I can, mm. um, you know, do this middleman, build the bridge between um, the that world and and that in Brazil. So, but um, we, to be very honest, we didn't know about the um, mental issue that um, James had. And yeah. as soon as I found out that. 
in Brazil, I was amazed by him. I was when I was still living in Brazil, he became my idol. He was like I, I was just thinking, if the guy can be number four in the world for mm. ten years in a trot and winning yeah. nine majors now, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah. And and I have this issue because he's cons consistent uh, fighting against himself. Imagine yeah. what he could do without it if he was just like have a strong mind and strong mentality. You know what I mean? He just yeah, yeah. Uh, he became my idol as soon as I read that article from um, from PDC PDC TV, and when I actually um, joined him, he wasn't in his best form. But I was so, like, I was so happy to um, to meet my idol. You know, yeah. and um, yeah, that I think I, I can clearly show my passion on the TV show when I won. And I, yeah. I remember I kissed him and I'm like, what am I doing? It was just the adrenaline that was just like, yeah. thank you very Emotion, much. Emotions take over, did not it? Yes, yes. And since then, we, we, we became friends and um, I started practicing with him when I was uh, living in London. And he helped me um, a little bit when I stopped uh, uh, playing the Players' Championship two years later. So it was, was good. It was good. I really enjoyed that. And um, yeah, every now and then I, I watch it back because I don't have that emotion anymore. You know, mm -hmm. I watch my games in the beginning and uh, all my celebrations and things like that. And I like, why I don't have that? I think it just became not normal for me, I, you know. And uh, I think you, uh, I need to, to get to higher stage of my career to show that emotion again. But I miss yeah. that. And sometimes it's good to watch it back and feel that inside of you again, you know? And do you think that's why you play quite well on stage? Because any time you've played on stage in the World Championship, UK Open, World Cup, you played really well. I did indeed, yes. Um, even though I was going through bad, um, bad uh, patches, um, and one of the games that I, uh, I, I won't forget was against Ron Molekam when I went yeah. to two new open sets, uh, fair play to him to come back. But at that moment, um, I was having really big issues with my grip, with my uh, throw, with my stance. I was just all over the place. It was the day before, I called two good friends of mine. We practiced for four or five hours until I find it. I didn't find it. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, I didn't find it, but um, it was until I feel comfortable. And I like okay. I think I think I can play on the stage there, and like don't be ashamed of myself. And when I got to the stage, uh, oh my god, that was good. <laughs> that was a great game. Um, but yeah, I think that helps a lot. I um, I, I always felt comfortable on the stage. Um, uh, I I like to show emotions in the end of games or sets, but not during the the game. I try to keep my poker face and not, yeah. not celebrate too much. And I am cool with that. I think I think I uh, I think I belong there. And just a matter of time to see me more often and to be playing there more often. No, I still need to gain some experience, and um, I think that's the only thing that is lacking now. Yeah, I was going to ask you about your World Championship appearances later on, but now we've mentioned it. Your first first time you played on the Alexander's Palace stage was actually against Peter Wright. Um, they don't get much harder than that, do they? <laughs> no, it doesn't, does it? <laughs> yeah, um, I met Peter uh, in 2015 in the same TV show because we are, we are filming three TV shows, I think, at the same time. And Peter was there and he was... Uh, a gentleman and you know what I, what can I say he asked me a few questions um we we had a talk and I said I will make it I don't care I'll make it mm. and to play against him my first wood um championship appearance and to nick a set of him which I actually yeah. played really well I think I did play the first three sets very well just the last one I was thinking it could be my last dart any any moment now and that put put me um, a little bit off uh, but his interview after that was brilliant and it is still the the words is still in my head you know when he said uh, 
he's an awesome guy. He said he would make it and he did it. And, you know, what can I say to him? And even now, uh, I still friends with him. I still, when I go to the Pro Tools and these other tournaments, uh, every time I meet him, we always have a chat. And I really congratulated him when he was world champion. I was really pleased like he was mine because he deserved it. Yeah, following that, um, you went to Q School. I think you had five attempts at Q School. <laughs> Sorry for bringing it up. Um, you yet to win a tour card, but after that World Championships, you actually came very close. Uh, I think you got to the semi final on the last day. Um, I think you missed out by four points in the end, but you got to the semi final. Obviously, two wins away from getting a tour card. Um, what do you remember about that day, and what were your emotions coming away from the venue? Um, yeah, I th- uh, there was two moments where I got really, really close uh, from uh, from the tool card. I think the first one was when I started showing up in 2017 when I qualified for the European Tours, uh, which I missed uh, in the Q school. I missed one that to beat Paul Hawley, I think. Um, and if I had one, uh, I would get enough points because there, there was uh, a different yeah. system uh, points. I think I was four points uh, below. The, the cut off, but that game would give me five because yeah. it was one, two, three, five, and nine or something like that. Ah, oh, right, and, yeah. In yeah. the end, and um, and that that game would put me uh, in 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 the um, uh, top of the yeah. rankings, and I still had one more game to get my uh, two card throughout the day, um, and. I missed uh, a data double, and um, that was really, really close to get it. And the year after, I think, I got uh, I, I played in Europe. I think it was the first time, or two years later, I was my first time playing. Um, the first time they split the Q school in two different venues. I decided to go to Germany, and I got one point away from that one one game with the new system. Was just one game. Um, that was hard because I was really expecting to get my tool card mm. than any other year. Um, I was playing my best darts and I showed that I was just unlucky, really. Uh, but it was the, the worth a shot. I still have to, to play my game on Q School. I never, ever done that. I think I've been putting too much pressure on myself. Mm. Um, but... But I am I'm working on it now. I've got a um, great team behind me, and I'm doing mental training, uh, seeing sports psychologists, seeing um, hypnotherapists, everything I can to release the pressure. And let's see, let's see what what I can do really, because it's just a matter of time. I know that, and when I sh- when I show my game, I just need to show my game in one day. And I know I can win my tool card, and that is where I belong. And I will not stop trying. Well, you're still only 31 as well, so you've got plenty of time on your side. Yeah, yeah, true. Um, but I don't don't want to waste all my mm. all my time playing Q school. I wanna I wanna play against the best. You know, I, I've had two or three good years playing against them. Uh, even though I didn't get my tool card, but but I won challenge tools. I got mm-hmm. uh, top of the uh, order of merit in the in the Q school and that uh, opened the doors to where I actually want to be and to be out of it it's just it's annoying it's annoying yeah. <laughs> um, it's similar for your good friend Cody Harris I've been lucky enough to hang, hang out with Cody a couple of times he's, he's such a chilled out individual and he um, but he's come very close as well um, and I think uh, he's a brilliant player I think once he gets his to a card you thrive like yourself. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, to be honest, because um, I don't have many box to tick, you know, and I've done most of what I wanted to do. And I think one of the last ones, of course, will be winning a tool card and winning some um, ranking events. That's it. That's all I want. You know, it's not not much, but. Um, I will. I will do my best until I do it. Really, as I as I've done now. Yeah, and although you haven't got a tour card, you've still played in three world championships. Uh, you played in the UK Open, where you averaged 
under them one and still lost six one. <laughs> Jamie Hughes averaged under and seven, which is really unfortunate. And obviously you've represented Brazil three times in the World Cup. That must have, that must be the proudest moment of your career, is it representing your cu- country? I think he uh, uh, yes, when I uh, put back um, that uh, yellow shirt uh, representing my country. I was more than used every year. I was traveling to um, WDF World Cups or uh, BDO's America's Cup or Caribbean Cup. Um, I was always in the team for four, five, six years in a trot. You know, in, when I moved to England, uh, because of just uh, internal rules, I could not play anymore because uh, I needed to be part of the tournaments in Brazil to to be part of the team. And um, it was, uh, I think, two or three years waiting. But when I put back that little shirt, yellow shirt with Team Brazil in the back, that was really, really uh, one of the most proud moments I've, I've ever um, lived in darts, really. Um, but I cannot let it um, go. Um, I cannot, um, how can I say, um, forget about my first world championship as well, representing the whole South America, yeah. which is not um, something easy to do. You know, uh, all the support I have from the guys there, and it's it's get it's growing. It's getting bigger and bigger. We're getting more countries to play. This lockdown is getting us even more close together. And you know what I can say? I now I now uh, play tournaments when I play against Chile, Chilean guys, Argentinian guys, uh, Guiana guys. Um, the uh, starting federation in Colombia as well. Um, Costa Rica. I love the guys from Costa Rica. They are massive, and they will they will make it because they put so much hard work on that, and they have so many players for the size of the countries that it's just a matter of time to to get one of them here as well. You know, uh, I I I cannot be proud of the work they're doing there to to raise the the game in the whole region. You know, and that's that's why. I came here. Yeah. Um, Ozzy, you spent most of your time on the Challenge Tour. You won a title in 2018. Just tell me how hard is it to win them titles? Because even though it's the second tier of professional darts, the standard is still unbelievable and it's just getting better and better each year. It's it's getting mental crazy, really. (laughs) (laughs) I don't want to be part of Challenge Tour now. (laughs) (laughs) It's just so hard. I've been losing first round of 95, 97 averages. Like, how? How come? You know, that's um, where these come from. You no, know, they all seem to be playing the best darts, you know. And um, when I won, I remember my, my draw was terrible. I remember every single um, game of that day. You know, Richie Corner, um, Callum Luz, uh Oh, uh, Callum Reed, which yeah. he had won yeah. the um, the uh, challenge to order merit the, the last yeah. year. Um, ben Burton, Michael Bernard win the final. You know, it Ooh. was mental. You like, I don't know how I won that. that <laughs> because, you know, it, it was crazy hard, and since then, get even harder, got yeah. even harder. So. Oh, I, I think I'm, every time I go to the challenge, so I'm on the, w- one of the favorites, and I, I cannot get it closer from quarterfinals. I would say, you know, I had a one good run. I think last 16, they mm. see, uh, the f- only four tournaments though. Um, my overall average was above uh, 19 all four tournaments, and I that that was the only thing I do I did. You know, just how, how can you do that? You know, you're playing consistent, great great darts. And you cannot go through the second or third round. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you mentioned having a tough draw, the one, the one where you won. Uh, that must make it more sweet then, knowing that you beat those quality guys to win the title. Oh yes, definitely. Um, me, I, I, I remember clearly the. I remember all the games, but the, the last four when I got Ben Burton, get, I used to practice with him, and and I. Um, I looked at the other side and Michael Burnett was there like I hope he wins because I know how to play them you know I don't remember who was the other guy lost in the semi-final 
but I want to, because I played players that I've never played before, I like, you know what, these last two games, if I play someone that I know, I know how to win, you know, mm. and that was what happened. I played Ben Bolton. He, unfortunately, he said he was uh, his worst game of the day, but for me, it was good. I beat him, and then I went and beat, I think, 5-1 Michael Barnett in the final, and it was on that year that he won every single thing, you know. Yeah, he was, he was on fire, wasn't he? Yeah, he, he, uh, he made four or five finals, no, even more, six finals, and won four of them, something like that, you know, and the, the only two that he lost was one against me and one the the day after uh and you know i played really well i just uh, i just think um i think i had a bit lucky and it's that day and it's um the timing was right and my finishing and everything else and since then it's been happening the other way around to me, you know, yeah. I have been in the wrong side of it in every single uh, tournament. Um, people are taking good shout, uh, good outs against me and I'm missing doubles in when I shouldn't miss. And, you know, I just, it will turn again. I, I've been there, I've been in that position again and I feel I'm closer again to win another challenge to win to maybe top of the order of merits yeah. very soon. So I want... I want to do that. I want to win one or two more days here and fight for my tool card. And if I have to play Q school, I will do it again. But it will be a lot easier if I don't. <laughs> yeah. That, you mentioned Mike Gabbana. That year. He, was, he went nuts, really. But you also had... That was the year, Christopher Tyski. Um, he was just going mental. He, he won... I think it was a back-to-back pro tour that year. Yeah. Well. Yes. Fair play to Christoph. I've um, I've never heard about about him before. To be honest, we do, we as I said in the beginning, uh, we didn't have much information about that, about the players, and uh, apparently he was well known here uh, before. You know, not as, as well known as he is now, but uh, people had heard about him. Yeah, he was a world master, wasn't he? Yeah, he won world master just yeah. before he made the the. Uh, and when he won the World Master, like, who is that guy? You know, we just mm. never heard about him. Uh, it was just one lucky tournament, I would say. And he proved me wrong, to be honest. But it, it was actually lack of information. If you get his um, his career, of a, he's been having great results since mm. ever. You know, and uh, what can I say? Fair play to him. He's got the thing that I am trying to reach, which is the coolness and... Um, uh, clinical the clinical darts when when he needed he doesn't need more than one or two darts a double to finish up the leg you know and he never folds under pressure he's a quality player he's a quality player you know and to to have won the tool card um on the rankings in less than one year you know it's it's amazing achievement it is, yeah so, well players like that um he's obviously i think he's about 44 now is he um, Jose de Souza, he was in his forties getting a tour card. So that just surely that gives him more belief. I said earlier, you're only thirty one. Um, you've got time on your side. Yeah, it's true. Like um, you know, it's never too old to play darts. That's that's the um, real thing about it. And um, you know, if you you see even players like Peter Wright, he never um, he was always there, but he never actually made it until. You, let's say 2014 when he made yeah. a final, you know, and he was thinking, he gave a lot of interviews saying he it would be his last tournament because he would retire from darts and things like that. And that tournament changed his life. So I'm waiting for this tournament, you know, I'm waiting for one of these um, long run uh, and deep, deep run in the tournaments and that, that could change my life. It could be one UK Open or... Um, it could be one world championship, why not? You know, uh, yeah. and that's that's all I want. Uh, I, I've been waiting for I know my time will come because I've always achieved what I want in, in my life, and I will achieve this time as well. I just need to be a little bit more patient and, and keep working hard because, to be honest, I can I never met someone that worked harder as, as me, so. Mm. I know that good things will come uh, just a matter of time. 
And obviously, winning a tour card opens so many doors as well. You, it's, you can qualify for the match play World Grand, Grand Prix all the majors. You've got a opportunity to qualify for all those then. And obviously, that gets your ranking up and, and gets your confidence at playing the top players week in, week out. Yeah, that's true. I think uh, the most important is to get have some uh, some kind of um, schedule that you know you're gonna follow for two years. You know, when you play when you play Challenge Tour, you don't you don't even know your schedule because uh, in the Challenge Tour you're playing at eight in the morning, and in Pro Tour you're playing at twelve, one, two yeah. o'clock in the first game. So it's it's completely different. Uh, once you get a tour card, you can. You know, set your body time. Let's say that you know in a in the right schedule when you can do your things right at home and pr- prepare yourself. Because nowadays I've been waking up six out six in the morning, so I can get my body used to the time of the challenge tour. Mm, or mm. what five five weekends a, day, uh, a year? Yeah. You know that yeah. that doesn't really make sense. Because when I go to the pro uh, players championship, when it gets twelve or one o'clock time to play, I'm tired because I woke up six yeah, in the morning. Yeah. You know, so I need, um, I need this guarantee for two years, so I can uh, make sure my body set to the right time and and peak when I have to peak. You know, uh, peak from three or four in the uh, afternoon, so I can go and have a good run and win one of the, these tournaments. No, that's um, that's uh, that's what I've been working on. But at the same time, I need to to face what is in front of me and. What is in front of me is the challenge to... Yeah, to and you, men- you mentioned they start at 8 in the morning. And obviously, they have two tournaments in one day, don't they? Yeah. So, if, you, if, if you go to the back end of the second tournament, like this year, I think the first one didn't finish till close to midnight. Yeah, um, yeah, it was a nightmare. I remember when I won my... I won the second one in the day, and I was playing darts half 8 in the morning, and I only finished like half 11. You know, it was it was a nightmare. How can I play darts in the next day? No, I'm not complaining. Uh, things escalated as, uh, more than the plans. To be honest, PDC has been doing an amazing job, but it's time to reconsider. You know, and yeah. uh, I've been invited to have a chat with them as well next week, I think. And uh, um, uh, I I would love to put these in table on the table and see, like you know, it's been getting. Four or five hundred players in the challenge tour. You cannot have two two tournaments in the same day. You know, you either um, get a third tier uh, ranking tour. You know, mm-hmm. uh, below the challenge tour, where you can get promotions and delega- and relegations from pro tours to challenge tour to a third division. You know, tour, um, and you work like that, yeah. or you just make one tournament in the day and, you know, through maybe three tournaments over the weekend, one Friday, one Saturday, one Sunday, because it's so tiring, it's hard to get to be consistent because there's so many good players. And as you can see, the last couple of years, every uh, every tournament's a different winner. You know, it's really hard to yeah. have two or three winners in the same, uh, two or three uh, names in the same weekend winning everything. You know, it, it yeah. doesn't happen happen anymore because it's tiring. You, you cannot play uh, at that high standard for that long period of time. You know that that's got to change, really. Um, but I understand them. That's not priority. Um, but I will I will ask them if they have any plans for the challenge too. Yeah. So if you go to Q school, you're obviously allowed to play on the challenge tour then. Yeah. Um, so do you think the system should, should change because you've got players turning up at Q school who realistically are never going to win a tour card um, so do you think the system should change today? Uh, honestly um, I think um, the weight on the Q school is far too much mm. you know um, I think Q school I think you've got to have key school. You've got to give everyone a chance. Yeah, yeah. Um, but to give away 30, 32 cards for key school and only four for development tools and challenge tool, it's it's too much um, weight on the on only four days of the year while you have um, 
uh, at least 12 days through the year on the Challenge Tour now because it's six weekends in and four four tournaments per, per weekend. So you have 24 tournaments in the Challenge Tour and Development Tour to actually show who are good, who are consistently good, which is the ones that will show up in the PDC and make history, like Rob Cross, Ryan Shirley, you know, Richie um, North. These guys, are, uh, I think Richie Rich North won through Q School, but he, he was winning a lot in the Challenge Tour as well. Yeah. So uh, what I can say is... Um, I think I never studied it. I never actually got numbers, but I think the players who have won the two card through the challenge tour had done a lot better than the players than most of the players who have won through Q school. You know, and you should open for I, I don't know eight, maybe ten tool cards in in the challenge tour, and at least four or six in the development tour. You know, because they 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 deserved um, a little bit more. Um, uh, knowledge about uh, after the whole year playing that, you know what I mean? You just yeah, yeah. It, it, it gotta split a little bit better the two cards, but you know that's the PDC decision. I'm not behind the scenes. I don't have the information they do. I only yeah. have my information. You know, so maybe they are doing something right because every year it's increasing the numbers of entries. So yeah, it's been it, massive now, isn't it? Crazy, they are not. Yeah. You know that's. Th that's fact that they are they are not crazy. They know what they're doing. But my point of view as a player is needs to start changing a few things because otherwise it will be overloaded and people will start uh, like before it, it be overloaded and people start not not doing the challenge to anymore because there's too many players or not doing key school because it's just a nightmare of a weekend. It's just yeah, yeah. A thousand players, let's say, you know. Need things need to start changing. I I think I think. Yeah. Um. Obviously, with you playing on the challenge, so you're able to play BDO stuff as well. Uh, you played a lot of BDO stuff. I ask, like, yeah, people have interviewed so far: David Evans, Wayne Moore, and Garen Roderick, referee. Um, I've asked them the same thing. What do they? What do you make of the state of the BDO at the moment, especially with Des Jacklin resigning? And then being voted back in. Um, being really, really honest, I'm not aware of the um, situation. I know this because it's in every single headline. I don't know the reasons he resigned. I don't know the reasons the counties voted him back. I am not sure about it. I cannot say. Um, I I know a few things um, uh, that I, I'm. Not even I know if I can say, but uh, financially, when he assumed uh, the BDO is already broken, so he's trying to work um, as bad as he can. But he was tied up with contracts. That's I, I I know for sure, and I think everyone knows it. He could not do more than he's done, but people say he could. So who am mm. I to say uh, is everyone wrong? Maybe my lack of information is. Um, yeah, shows that I am wrong but as far as I know the small information that I know he couldn't do a lot better and one big decision he made that he was criticised was to change uh, the venue of the World Championship yeah. um, and it seems to be the only great decision he's done Yeah, everyone enjoyed that yeah now, it was good it was that good. is not too bad as they say you know what I mean yeah uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's hard. I don't want to say a lot more on that on that subject because I, I I don't know. I just think um, the uh, the few tournaments I played on a video when he was there, he seems a nice guy and talk good good sense. And um, I don't know. I I didn't follow his work to be honest, uh, but I know he couldn't do a lot more because he was tied up by previous yeah. directors regarding contracts and um, financial agreements and things like that, you know, so. Yeah. Like coming away from all that, I think I've bored you enough with all that. <laughs> yeah. um, growing up in Brazil, obviously Brazil is a massive football mad country. So how did you come to start playing darts? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, I used to play football, though. I um, I always played football all my life until I had um, I, I was 18, I think, and uh, uh, I nearly made it. I was playing a semi-professional club, and I was um, having good uh, friendly matches. Um, you know that uh, pre-season matches against the top teams um, in Rio. And uh, I had a injury, and after the injury, I never came back to the same the level I was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the meanwhile, I, um, you know, I when I when I grew up, uh, my dad and my mom, uh, they split. Um, they split um, when I was only two, I think, two and a half, and my dad moved away from like a city like four or five hundred kilometers about. 300 miles, I would say, 350 miles. So it was really hard for me to see my dad. I was, um, I think I was with him 10 or 15 days a, a year. Um, and and then I, uh, what clicked me into darts was because uh, I realized there was uh, at least one weekend of darts every month in Brazil. And if I played darts, I would, I would meet my dad. That was it. I would be yeah. with my dad for at least two more days, you know, uh, per month. Mm -hmm. And that was what motivated me to play darts. Not the game itself, but I, uh, as I am competitive, I always practice. I, wanna, I always wanted to, to do well. And I did. Uh, and that kind of light up the fire, firing. And yeah. because of that, I started meeting with my dad more often. And we start to have a relationship that I've never thought would be possible. Like we're more than just son and dad now. And um, because darts gave me, like my dad, my best friend, I would say, uh, I, I want to give something special for darts and I will never give up until I pull actually South America, Brazil and South America into that scenario like proper not only the ones we have now, but proper uh, um, darts there, you know. And I hope, I hope I can make it become another Australia, for example, you yeah. know, and have their own tour, the professional tour, who brings every now and then good players over. Yeah. Um, and what what is the darting scene like in Brazil at the moment? In Brazil, it's nearly nothing, to be honest. But oh. yeah. Uh, we, we started um, a new company four years ago, for a German guy that uh, used to play a lot of darts and organize darts in Germany. So it, 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 uh, it started to grow the darts again, but he had to move back to Germany last year, so he closed, closed the company up, and mm. that was a, a, a big, um, big... Big blow. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, my motivation, like mm. in the beginning of the year, was not good enough. But um, a few things happened. Uh, we started working again with the Brazilian Dance Federation, which is associated with WDF and, and BDO. Uh, and they just re elected a new team of uh, directors. And they seem to be a lot more open minded to restructure the darts in Brazil. Uh, and it's good to have them on our side because they actually is the, are the voice of darts in Brazil. So it will be good. And and also, me and me, and my brother and our two wives, so four of us, we started a YouTube channel um, to, in Portuguese to talk about darts, to uh, explain people how to play darts, to give news, to, uh, curiosities about darts, history about darts. So. We are working really hard the last three months, three or four months. We've been working really, really hard to give all the information for people in darts to start playing, people in Brazil to start playing darts. And we have gone crazy because there are people all over Brazil. We're like, we only have federation in three cities in Brazil. And we have more than 15 or 16 different cities that follow us in in um in the youtube and instagram so uh, this it was this was a quite um quite good work at always still um low in numbers of subscribers and followers mm -hmm. uh to see people like 
from north to the top, from the top to the bottom of Brazil, following us and asking questions about that. And it's just a matter of time, I think. It's 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 getting. Um, I I've been. I think it's, we've been getting good results, you know, and that's amazing. That's yeah. so good, really. Yeah, that's good to you. Um, I'm going to ask you one question to wrap it up now. Uh, yeah. let, you, let you go and sit in the sun or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to ask this every week to everyone I interview. Um, it's been going, it's doing, doing the rounds on social media. Uh, who are you a uh, top five greatest players of all time? Going from number five right down to number one. <laughs> It's hard. It's very yeah, hard. It's, it's really difficult. It it is. Um, ah, <laughs> it, you know what? Because we didn't have many um, information in Brazil back in the days, you know. So I'll say most people, most of the players here, uh, I I have to start. Um, number five would be Barney. Yeah. Uh, I put Barney there because five would. Ch- like five world championship, you cannot beat that. Um, it, it, even Von Gover now is being hard, is being having problems to get more than three. You know, yeah, it doesn't seem that he's gonna dominate as he was three, four years ago. Uh, it seems that you're gonna get even closer the gap between Michael and the other players. Yeah, um, I, I, I'll put Gary, and I have to put John Lou as well because. Winning three world titles in three different days. De- de- yeah, that's unreal, that is. That's unreal. Yeah. Um, then the top three, I think, is going to be the same one to everyone. But I I put Van Gogh in third. Yes. Ooh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah Van Gogh in third. Um, Eric Abriso in second. And um, Phil Taylor top. That, that it is. Yeah, brilliant. Um, yeah, so I'll wrap it up here. Thanks for joining me today. It's uh, you've been an absolute pleasure to speak to. Um, and I wish you all the best on the challenge tour when we get up and running again. And hopefully, you'll be on the pro tour full time soon. Thank you very much, mate. Appreciate for your time, and I uh, hope you have enjoyed. Cheers, yeah, guys. Yeah, I love this. Thanks, Diogo. <laughs>